Hi, this is Tom Upchurch, and I'm behind the camera this time, but we're taking a tour of Phil Upchurch's uh, archives. Uh, he's gotten pretty modern. You can see he's got his uh, uh, screen up here uh, working off dual screens with genealogy on one side and pictures on the other, but most of what we're going to talk about now is all this incredible amount of information that he has accumulated through the years uh, about Upchurch family. Phil, how about tell us about that? All right, well, I think the, the thing we need to do is to go into the file room, which is a good starting place for telling you about the huge number of records I've collected. Of course, it's worth remembering that North Carolina State University has agreed to set up the Upchurch Collection, which is in existence, and everything I'll show you here, plus much more, will go into the Upchurch Collection at NC State. But let's go take a look at the file room and some special aspects of uh, how I've kept records. Uh, of course, my records have kept been kept manually because, you know, I was born before dirt and uh, the uh, and before the computer. So we had to devise our own system. Now, I'm a great collector of information, and so with regard to upchurches, I collected everything I could get my hands on there for 40 years, including uh, newspaper articles, uh, letters that people wrote to me, census records, uh, details about clips from newspapers. Wait, but, wait, wait, wait a minute, Phil. Yes. What? Uh, I'm seeing... These are four files deep, and they're going around here. Yes, and, I've got about uh, forty. Four and four they files go around deep. the and they go around the corner too. And in, into the next room. Either. And into the next room, and this is all Upchurch genealogy information. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what's in these files. Well, uh, I have it organized this way. In all of these files, we have the people who do not have the last name Upchurch. On that side of the room, we have all the people who have the last name Upchurch. Those are filed by first name. They're all Upchurches. So you'll have Ralph and John and James and so on. These are filed by family names, last name. Now, here, for example, would, would be uh, the... Uh, this is the RAA to RAL group. Now, sometimes I have a, just, a, just a range, but then again, if the family is prominent enough, like the Ramses, the next ones, they even took two folders about the Ramses, and then here are the Ransoms, and that's a small one, and then we have the RAM, the RAS, then we come to the Rabon, and so on, all down the way. Now, let's just think about the, these. Now, I'll tell you what happens. Every time I go into these files, I have an emotional feeling about the names I see. I see here Isa, no middle name, Ra. R-A is the last name. I corresponded for years with this lady, and she supplied huge amounts of information. I never met her, but it's all in these file cabinets someplace. And now there's a newspaper clipping, you see in an area where I knew there were upchurches. This was at the Upchurch Enclave in Franklin County, North Carolina. And, I, and I've shown here a little extract of the family relationships. And the trick is to say, well, did the Upchurch family ever fit into that? And sometimes the answer is yes, and sometimes no. This is um, the notes of a visit I made on the 20th of December, 1989, to Lottie Mae Jones. And she's long since passed away. But she was a dear lady and gave me lots of information. And again, all of the information she gave me is scattered throughout these files. Now I could go on and on showing you these. Here's, uh, I, I had my granddaughter, Jenna Lane Upchurch, uh, download all the obituaries she could find on the internet. And I put them in here. This one was for Pamela 
Rayburn up church, and I went so far already as to try to place her in a family setting. Now the first thing that happens when I get a letter from someone that says, can you possibly help me find who my uh, grandfather was? I'm off to these files to see what I can find. Let's go over to the upchurch uh, side a little bit. If I open this drawer, where, here, here are all the upchurches who had the first name Lucy. And you see they're quite a far back. I guess there are 40 or 50 of these. My and, aunt, my aunt may be in there. She was Aunt Lucy. Well, she could be. <laughs> Now, a, a, a nasty deal is, of course, a lot of times they might be called Lucy, but that was the middle name. So if I knew the first name, it might be Mabel Lucy Upchurch. And sometimes I would then double file these and put Lucy in here and, re and refer to Mabel Lucy. So sometimes I can track them down, even though the, the middle name is hidden. But here's, let's see, um, uh, this is Lucy Upchurch. And I see the XID number, which is my code. She was XID 34818, which means I had identified 34,817 people in the Upchurch family before I got to her. But I know that that XID number tells me that I know she's a cousin. Okay, yes. now let me, let me understand the XID number. As you encounter people, rather than trying to plug them into a tree or anything, you give them a number and then you keep a record of where they are. Yes, but I, don't, I only give them an XID number if I can track them all the way back to Michael Upchurch, the original immigrant to this country. So if you see an XID number, you know that I know how that person fits into the entire family. This is XID 34818. And this particular record is from the 1900 census of Henry County, Georgia. Right, well, I want to wait a minute. Are you saying that you you can track back 60,000 people to Michael Upchurch? Exactly, I can. In fact, I can do much more than that. Those are the ones that I have done and have published on. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you I can track back 500,000 of them. So, buddy, <laughs> if you send me the information, we can have a deal working together to make all this happen. Yeah, you have yeah. to understand now, in working with people, I'll pick up my end of the log for a little bit, but buddy, you need to pick up your end too, one yeah. way or another. So a few thousand dollars would help pick up the log a lot? Oh yes, it would. Yeah. And, and we have people that have contributed a great deal. Many people who, who are not wealthy will send in a little bit, but there are other people who don't have anything, but they'll send in tons of records. And I mm. love those dear people because they give what they can information. Right. Well, I could go on through with Lucy and see, uh, you know, here now I see this one is uh, in 1985 from Roy White Jr. How I'd love to stop and tell you about Roy White Jr. and all he's done for the Upchurch family. Well, you've seen just a snippet of my records. Now, I also have census records. I have a geological file. I have all of these books. These are books about families. These are books about ge geographical relationships. And bear in mind, all of this goes to North Carolina State University in due course. In the meantime, Cousin Tom and I are trying to figure out how to get more and more of this stuff online. But you can see, with this volume of material, it's a huge amount of material. Uh, awesome is the only word that I can think of. Appreciate all the work you're doing. Well, it's been a fantastic pleasure and a joy to me. If we can find a way to get this on the internet, both in video and your stories and your writing, it'll be a wonderful treasure, not just for the Upchurch family, but mainly for those in the Upchurch family and all who are related to Upchurches. So, that's quite a challenge. If we can get this information substantially online, the American Upchurch family will have the most profound and complete record of any family in America.